Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. I am from Angstrom Education Private Limited and today's video is about the maxima and minima of functions of where variable. So today we will be talking about the functions that are in one variable and talking about their maxima and minima. So let me tell you what is a maxima and what is a minima. Basically, these uh, are the topics from application of derivatives. When we are talking about the applications of derivative, we come across this topic maxima and minima. So, along this topic, we obtain two important things. The first is a point and the second was is value. That is maxima value, mi maxima point, minima value and minima point. So, I will tell you, you know what point is? Point is some value of x and some value of y, you know, that is in the quadrants or that is along the y or x axis. And the value means when we put those x, y values in the function. So, the function value is the maximum value or the minimum value and the point is where we are obtaining the maxima or the minimum. So, maxima as the word suggests, it means the maximum values. And minima, as the word suggests, it clearly means minimum value. That was, uh, you know, the de basic de uh, definition if you are talking about. So, basically, we have two kinds of maximas and two kinds of minimas. First one is local maxima or local minima. So, local maxima minima means the points, all the points, all the values where the functions are either maximum or either minimum. That is, if the function is positive, Around all those values, I will obtain local maxima. You know, if I have five values where the function is positive, all those values will be included in local maxima. And if the function is negative, if the value of the function is negative around some points, those will be named as local minima. You know, if I have some values where the function is clearly negative, if I have six values, uh, you can uh, say for if for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the function fx is negative. So, all these points are the local minima points for me. And the value of the function that is f1, f2 till f5, all these values will be the local minima values for me. And if I have some values of x, for example, f x is positive for 6, 7, 8. So, these three points include the local maxima points. And all these points, when put in the function, these will give me local maxima values. As simple as that. So, local maxima minima include one more than, can include more than one values of the points where we are getting the maximum values, that is the positive values of the function and the minimum values, that is the negative values of the functions. Let us draw a graph uh, for this. We will understand it better according to the graph. Okay, so we have a graph here and I have drawn a function. Let this function be fx. Okay, so now I will see where does it have the maximum and the minimum values. Now clearly here I have the maximum values that are the humps and the downfalls that are the troughs here i have the minimum values because clearly fx is positive on the top side and it is negative on the downward side because here i have positive y axis and on the down i have negative y axis this is very basic so i'll draw now dotted lines to the axis so as to make clear what we talk about absolute and what is the difference between the local things so now if i'm talking about these two points here the value of fx is clearly positive. So these two points include local maxima. Both these points are local maxima points. And the value of function around these points will be local maxima values. Now around these two points clearly here fx is negative. So these two points they both give me the, uh, the local minima points or local minima values for the function. Now apart from local minima and local maxima, I have absolute minima and absolute maxima. Now, what is that? When I will talk about absolute, I am just moving a step ahead for the local. Since local, uh, local maxima or local minima includes number of points, the absolute considers only one point. So, basically, the local maxima, if I am talking about, uh, sorry, absolute, if I am talking about absolute maxima, that will give me the maximum value for the function. The maximum, the topmost value of the function. And if I am talking about absolute minima, that will give me the lowest value for the function. 
the most minimum value. So if I am talking about this graph, the maxima, I have two maxima here, this and this. But if I am focusing on absolute maxima, that is the most maximum value, that will be this. Because clearly here fx is greater than the other fx. Now if I am talking about absolute minima, the most minimum value, I will get this. Because this value is much less than this value. Clearly we can see the gap here. So th this is the difference between lo local maxima and local minima, local, uh, I mean local both and absolute maxima and absolute minima. In case of locals, we include a cluster of points. But in case of absolute, either we get the most maximum value or we consider the most minimum value. We don't talk about the values in between them. This is how we study the maxima and minima. So now to find the maxima and minima, we have two different, uh, you know, two different methods. The first one is first derivative method and the second method is second derivative method. We will discuss both alongside so as to have a better approach. Now if I am talking about first derivative that clearly means I have to der uh, derivate the function one time. And if I am talking about the second derivative method it is clear from the name that I have to differentiate the function two times. We will first of all discuss the first derivative method. Let's suppose that I have some function fx, okay? I'll derivate it one time and then put its value equal to 0. The value that I have obtained, I will simply put it equal to 0. When I put the derivative equals to 0, that will give me some values of x. x1, x2, x3, x4 and whatever. Then, when I have obtained these values, I'll start putting these values in the function f x that is i will start calculating fx1 fx2 fx3 fx4 and you know howsoever values i obtain so now i will tell you how do we find the maxima and minima if the values from fx1 to fx4 depending on the number line we will take x1 to x2 Incre in increasing order that is if I obtain 1 2 3 4 I'll take x1 as 1 x2 as 2 x3 as 3 and x4 as 4 that is I'll take the increasing order of the numbers if my function the value for my functions if the value for my functions it is moving f dash sorry we will be talking about f dash here, not fx here. The f dash, because it is the first derivative method, we need to find the first derivative of those. We will, what we will do, we will find the derivative of the functions putting the value x1, x2, x3, x4. And then, if the value for the derivative, that is f dash x, if this value is moving from positive to negative, that is, first of all, I obtained positive value, then I obtained some zero, and then I obtained negative value. That will mean it is a maxima. That is going from positive to negative gives you a maxima. But if the first derivative, it goes from negative to positive. The value is going from negative to positive. That is the first value was negative. Then for x2 it was again negative. For x3 it became 0. And then for x4 it suddenly became positive value. In that case, that means going from negative to positive gives me a minima. This is how we find if we are getting a maxima function or a minima function. That is what we do in first derivative method. We will revise it again. We take a function, we derivate it, it and put it to 0. When put, we put it to 0, we obtain some values for the function. Then we check by putting those values in the function itself and check if they are moving from positive to negative or negative to positive. If it's going from positive to negative, it's a maxima. But if it's going from negative to positive, it's a minima. Positive to negative means maxima. Negative to positive means minima. That is written here. That is, if we are approaching to negative, we obtain maxima. If we are approaching to positive, we obtain a minima. This was for the first derivative method. Now, what do we do in second derivative method? When I talk about second derivative method, I have some function fx. I take its first derivative and put the values equal to 0 and get the values of x. 
when we put f dash x equals to zero, I will definitely obtain some values for x. I'll just keep it with myself right now. Then I find the second derivative. When I find the second derivative, I put the values of x1 or x2 in that. That is, I find the values of f double dash x1, f double dash uh, x2 or whatever, uh, how many values I have obtained. Now, if the value for the double derivative by putting the values of x1 and x2 is negative, then that is called a maxima. And if the double derivative comes out to be positive, that is called a minima. And now, when we obtain the case that double derivative equals to zero, it is none. It is neither maxima nor minima. That means for second derivative method, we first differentiate a function. We put it to zero and find the values of x1, x2 and whatever. That is, we just find out the values for x. Then I take the double derivative and insert the values of x1, x2 and whatever into the double derivative. If the double derivative values come out to be negative, that is a maxima. And if it comes out to be positive, that is a minima. And if it comes out to be zero, that means it's neither maxima nor minima. Now you will find the similarity between the first derivative method and the second derivative method. That is, in the first derivative, we again said if we are approaching towards the negative, that is if we are going from positive to negative, that is a maxima. And in the second derivative method also, if the second derivative method is negative the value is negative f double dash x is negative then it's a maxima then again for minima we had for the first derivative method approaching to positive and in the second derivative method f double dash x value to be positive that means if we are going about the negative uh, values if we are talking about negative values we obtain maxima and if we are going towards the positive values we always obtain minimas i hope this maxima minima thing is clear with you. This is a very easy topic, but sometimes it's hard to understand this. We need to focus on the details. Tending or approaching to negative means maxima. Approaching to positive means minima. That was it for today's video. I hope this concept is clear with you. I hope you have no doubts left. For more content like this, stay connected with us. Thank you.